Recording, going live. Okay. I love going live. It's awesome. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. All right. Okay. All this. Okay. Show it to the camera. Check this out. It's my book on an iPad. Crazy. So we finished your book this week. We did. How do you feel? Great. I'm pretty excited because this cover is awesome. Do you see the water? Like, this is so me. I can't even stand it. So, Abe does good work. Yeah. This is full of, like, tiny little one steps that, like, kept me putting one foot in front of the other. And as I've edited it and, like, gone through it, I'm blown away because I remember the stories of each quote and it, what it brings out. Like it's 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 a journey with just they're they're short and sweet, but it has so much impact. So for me anyway, hoping it does for other people. Yeah. How did how was the way. journey? Like how did it start for you with the book? <sighs> well, I've always wanted to write a book. Um, and I have a computer that is full of so much writing and so many thoughts. And it's kind of just the way I sort out my head and the daily happenings and everything that, I don't know, just, I, I think a lot. So, um, I didn't realize I had a book and granted, this is a book of my, these are the short and sweets, but there's so much behind it. And I want to be able to tell the story of what's behind it. But honestly, like, what gets you through a day can just be one mantra. That's what I love about yoga. Like, to set an intention in your day, it goes such a long way. So, like, one thought can change the course of my day. And if I keep coming back to it, if I know what I'm focusing on, no matter what, you know, tries to edge its way in, that optimistic thought, I will keep coming back to it, keep coming back to it. And it trains your brain. It trains your brain to start reframing and looking for the right stuff. Because, you know, I know it cuts, but stuff happens, right? So how do you take those things that, like, edge their way into your day, reframe them, and then use them to become better? That's, that's what life is to me. So, yeah, bad stuff happens, but... That's not what's going to be. It's not going to define me. So. Can you share a quote? Um, sure. No, the, the first page. Stop waiting for someone to make things happen for you that you're capable of creating for yourself. It's your vision, not theirs. Your time is valuable. You are all you need to be a success. I think for me that's just... Uh, I've always been someone that has been very willing to push other people forward. I, that was my role for so long, and I don't mean just as an adult. I think from the time I was a kid, I, was, I saw myself as a behind-the-scenes person. Um, I don't know when that started. I'm trying to sort that out through a lot of work right now because I'm very afraid to be seen. And I always thought I would find great minds and I would find people with big, shining personalities, and then I'd, I'd lock onto their vision, and I'd be like, okay, I'm going to send you out there. I'm like, I, I have, I know how to use my brain to make you great. And I didn't have the confidence to teach. I just wanted to learn from great people. I, I'm attracted to that, but I didn't know that I had what was within me because, I don't know, I just doubted it for a long time. So I think it just comes down to... Um, finally realizing what my vision is and being so thankful for being raised in an optimistic, with optimistic parents and a point of view that, that really can save the day. And when I boiled it down, like the Optimist Journal, it just, like, it just came to me. And I was just sitting on a couch and I was in a pretty low position at that point. I was really sad. And I just knew that like there was a big shift coming that I really didn't want to face. But the Optimist Journal is what came to me in that worst moment. So if it can come to, if that type, if that's where I go to in that moment, then, you know, for me, there's hope and everything came out of that. And that's been all, that's just my writing. That's my thoughts. 
my, you know, thirst for knowledge, like podcasts and books and the way I want to spend my free time. And I just keep growing my brain and it's making life amazing. So that's that book. Um, what are your favorite podcasts right now? Like, oh, to? I love, um, I love Finding Mastery, Michael Gervais. Um, I posted that one on my uh, blog this week, um, the last, this past week's one, um, with the AT&T CEO. It was amazing. Um, I love Hello Humans with Sam Lamont, which I just listened, re-listened to Brene Brown today, which was an old one from last year, but amazing. And his mom is like my favorite, favorite author. I just, I love the way she writes. Um... I really like Impact Theory. Uh, I actually listened to Dax Shepard last night for the first time. How was it? Funny. Really, really funny. Um, irreverent, but, <laughs> you know, I got to get used to that a little bit. <laughs> I, I got to loosen up. Um, but, yeah, podcasts are just gems. Like, oh, I, I could listen to podcasts for hours. But I should. I now want to interview people and do my own podcast. So... It's making that jump from learning, always being a learner. And I said, I want to remain a learner, but I want to teach too. And I have a way, I, I believe in my way of being able to see moments and put, my, put words to them. And I just love, I love watching life and like putting the words to what I see. So, um, so I just want to keep doing that. Sure. Another quote. <laughs> um... These are all like they're so hard. Um, morning people. I mean, there's stuff in here for about mornings. I love mornings. Um, how about this one? There's so much ease and freedom in life when you live with a compassionate heart. And the world seems so scary sometimes. And my kids notice the TV's not on in my house. And the reason I say I'm attracted to podcasts is because I love thought leaders. And to me, the world, the, the news, the elections coming, like there's just so much stuff that when I turn it on, I go, oh, ouch. But what I feel is compassion. And when I feel that compassion and I refuse to put people in a box and I refuse to like judge and, and, I just, I, I, I sense where people are coming from. And I, I see that. And even if you keep your boundaries and you have to keep certain things outside of, of your day-to-day -day because it's what keeps you strong, I, I, am, I have so much compassion out there. Like, I cannot stand the way that we are labeling and putting everybody in their own little segment. Like, we're all human. We're all striving for the same things. We all have so much capability. And yeah, we have different circumstances, and, and I totally believe in my ability to help lift someone else up that doesn't have what I have, Or, but mindset is so important, and not being a victim is so important, and yeah, the, compassionate, the compassion will always just bring you to a place of, of being able to, to live freely, like you, you don't have to judge. Just know that someone's coming from their own, like their perspective is different than yours. It doesn't, there's no right perspective. So, I and mean, it's not what we hear out there. You know, it's all about you are this and you're, you know, Republicans and Democrats and uh, I don't know, this election cycle. I'm, I'm working on something on that. I've been, <laughs> it's been bothering me all day. So I have a family history in politics and I've, I've really backed off because I, the, the environment, I'm not quite sure what to do with it yet so Visual. it's coming before november 6th it is <laughs> <laughs> so um and with any book and with anything creative that you know and i've, I've reached it down to this what i'm doing is not expedient um, right i'm doing what is good so i'm not following oh. what's expedient i'm following what is good <laughs> oh i love that quote <laughs> oh that's yeah that amen to that because we live, the, 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 the 
concept of instant gratification in our world today, like I'm raising kids in this world. I'm telling you, if you're not there in two minutes from the time you said you were going to be there, they're calling you. I mean, it's just a wait for my mom for half an hour, okay? It's fine. I was fine. Everybody's okay. If you didn't have 10 cents or 20 cents to call on the payphone, you just sat there and waited. My kids are on the phone. Where are you? I don't know. The stoplight turned red. I'll be right there, you know? Um, so, yeah, they're used to that instant gratification. They're used to, right now, I'm going to have it. I mean, Amazon will drop something on my doorstep. Love Amazon. But, like, what they're used to, and even for someone yours, like, things are at our fingertips, right? And if you don't know any different, that's how your body is conditioned. That's how your brain is conditioned. So when you have that thought and you know, and that's one of my quotes in this book is, is, you know, nothing we're keeping comes in 24 hours. Like we don't get to our highest calling. We don't get the things that are worth keeping do not come overnight. So you can't constantly need that assurance in every single day that what you're doing is right. If you need that coming from the outside, and you don't have that internal, like, burning desire to do good. Because nobody's going to pat you on the back every day. I realized that when I had kids. I called it the like, lather, oh, rinse, repeat. <laughs> I called it the lather, rinse, repeat cycle. And you were just like, every day I wake up, I make a lunch, or I, you know, I put the bananas on the tray. I'm going to give a bath that night, and I'm going to go to bed tired, and I'm going to wake up, and I'm going to do the same thing the next day. And it's, that's a lot of life, Right? But you know what? When you do those consistent things, especially for kids, and then they grow up and they know that your consistency is there, look what happens. I mean, good things happen. But yeah, you don't you don't get the pat on the back every day. But if you know yourself and you know what you you know what you believe in, it comes from the inside. So yeah. So other things that come from the inside that aren't as good. How did you deal with self-doubt while writing The Optimistic, or 365 Days of Optimism? Um, you know, it's always a concept. It, it, it's or how do you For me, it's a split between this has already been done. People think this stuff already. Why do I need to put it out there? You know, I mean... There's, I don't consider myself a real big collective thinker, but at the same time, like when I, I know that my thoughts are a reflection of all the things I've taken in and I've taken in so many podcasts and so many books and those things, they shape my thoughts. My shot, my thoughts come out in my book. So, um, you know, there's a very big sentiment of, yeah, this has already been done. Um, but then as I edit it, I feel myself in there and I see I see the, the genuine me and that makes me proud even if I only give this book to my kids so um and then the other one is just that ultimate fear of being seen like there's there's as much uh, there's more fear in me the more I realize of actually being a success because it's super horrible of actually being successful than failing Oh my gosh, okay. Why? Um, because what I'm doing is so raw. And when it resonates, like, that's being seen. And I'm, I'm okay not being seen. It's super scary to be seen. And I don't, I'm good, like, doing, living my life. And, like, teaching my kids what I teach them. And, not needing, I don't know, it's scary to not know. It's scary to, to open yourself up to people you don't know and let them either judge you or, yeah, I just have let my life change. Like, I'm super good with my life. I wish, you know, there's a part of me that just could, I'm really good at lather, rinse, repeat. <laughs> so, self changing is hard. And my life has changed a ton, but I still am me. Like, I still do my day the same. And that's been hugely comforting in this whole journey of, you know, split families and not having kids on certain days. And I still get up and do me. I don't sleep till 10 a.m. on days I don't have my kids. 
I still get up and go to yoga. I still go to, you know, I do my thing. I have my thing. And that's been something that I've realized is so huge. Because my thing is my thing. And that's not a reflection. This is something else I've been thinking about. It's not a reflection on my family splitting up. I've known who, I've known who I am. And I do what I do because it gives me joy. And my kids see me do those things, whether it was master swimming. They would know. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, mom drops us off at school and she goes and swims. And that makes her happy. Or now I go play volleyball. Like, whatever it is that I have always done for me, I still do for me. And it's not a matter of, oh, now I have some extra time, so now I can do, now I can write a book. Like, I've been meant, I'm meant to write a book. That would have happened, I believe that would have happened either way. But people will say, oh, it's nice that you have time to focus. And it's not a matter of having time to focus. It's a matter of doing what you, that little voice in your head says you're supposed to do. And if you don't, if you don't do what that voice in your head says you're supposed to do, it will make you crazy and depressed even. I mean, I've never quite been there, but I, like, if you don't do what that voice in your head says you're supposed to, it is. It's so defeating. It'll make you nuts. So this book, you know, I mean, and Abe's been a big, I mean, you helped me come up with this idea because you saw my work, and I didn't realize I needed a little shove to say, like, you have a book sitting here on your computer. I didn't really, I hadn't really internalized that, you know. So sometimes it does, that nudge is always is helpful. So thank you. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, they're all my original thoughts based on just the path I'm walking, you know? So, I, I don't know. I just, I guess I'm... Who buys your book? Um, man. I hope a lot of people. Um, <laughs> uh, I think, you know, anybody that's looking for just a little lift in their day, um, the deeper meaning in things, like, you know, stuff doesn't work for me. Like... I wear flip-flops. A new pair of shoes is not doesn't help me, you know, like on those days. And if it does, like do what makes you happy. But I am a, I need thoughts. I need the bigger thoughts. So if you're into that deeper meaning, if you need that bigger, that little push, I mean, if, I mean, that's my favorite part of teaching yoga is just to be able to tell a story and set an intention. Like it is like, it's if you're looking for the deeper meaning because you can take any one of these quotes and you can run it out right you can set your own story to it you can see how it applies in your life if you're just you know if if you want to go up, just have to take a little bit of abstraction in your life and just look at what's happening in your day I, this can relate to these so, are universal truths like that relate to the specifics of my life but i'm pretty sure you know that's the thing about universal truths is that you can apply it you know if you're if you're willing to take a look, and some of the stuff is hard to look at, you know, even though it's optimistic, it's hard to look at. So, where do you draw the line between optimism and pessimism? Because there's a lot of things that are hard to look at, but are optimistic. Um, what is optimism for you? Or how do you define optimism? I, I am not, and, and I my favorite pe people are the ones who say like, "Oh, I'm a realist." Well, to me. Optimists are real. Real optimists are realists because real optimists believe in hard work. And optimism that's grounded in hard work is, to me, the ticket to life. Okay, like you don't just believe blindly and sit and wait for stuff to happen. You believe you can do it, and then you have to go and work for it. Step. Every <laughs> single step. And it's, it's conscious, and it's diligent, and it's confident and it's all of those things that you put one foot in front of the other and like you say it's not expedient you're not going to have like the book didn't happen in one day you know the blog was super jv before i hired abe and i like i just wanted to write and it was really like what was just an outlet for my sanity has turned into something more and if you you've got to walk through it though to find out what it's going to become so me. To me, I was always optimistic that it was going to be something, but at one point, maybe it was just something I was going to give to my kid. You know? And I wanted to put this comment out there. Um, 
I was looking at the statistics today of where we're at. It looks like we reached 190,000 people last week um, in a freshman. Um, that's 78,000 uniques. So you're seen. And, then there's still and the I'm fear. still okay. And then, <laughs> but I'm okay. <laughs> so fear doesn't define your... No. I think it was Picasso that said, I don't know where ideas come from. And I quote them all the time. I'm like, I don't know where they come from. I just get them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I believe it's a muscle. Uh -huh. um, where do you think ideas come from? I think the, the more we realize our own levels of creativity, the more the ideas flow. Like I said, I've had a whole journey on, and I, I've said this before, I didn't know what a creative was. And because I didn't get an A in art, I didn't think I was a creative. I don't like the craft store. I'm not creative. I don't do crafts. I don't. I'm that is a joke, and I've said it before. Like I cannot stand. I'm done. I don't do that stuff. So to me, that was creative. I didn't realize my mind. My mind is creative. Like I'm always trying to figure out the patterns and the whys behind why people do things, and why the certain relationships work. Why personalities are what they are what's the deeper conversation of like the bigger questions that's where the creativity comes from me so like ideas they, they are the more you if you let them flow and you don't let you don't Stall you, them. yeah <laughs> or be daunted by them you know and go oh, i don't even know what to do with that they do. They keep. They keep coming. Well, some ideas require a lot of risk assumption. You know, it's yeah. like going up. I'm taking a risk by just saying them out loud. <laughs> right. Yeah, and not caring what people think. I mean, I'm gonna be judged. Right? What yeah. Will they say? And that's. Will they say I mean, I that's. A, there's a ton of that in my book, because um, that's been a big one for me. As far as, I wrote a blog last week about you know, <clears throat> or maybe just a couple of days ago about, you know, where good comes from, and letting people judge you and say, Oh, you think I'm good? Oh, now I feel good about myself. That I you know, that was kind of something that I realized how I framed my goodness. And really that confidence to know that the goodness comes from inside of you and then you get to bring that out into the world in whatever form, you know, you've been given. And my goodness is gonna look different than your goodness or your goodness and but we all have it in us. So it would be boring if it all looked the same, right? And so who are we to judge what someone else's... I try really hard now not to judge someone else's intention. I trust. I trust my own intuition. And I just, you know, I, you want to let other people be themselves. And don't let that wrestle. Like, I don't want to wrestle with my own ego when someone else's. And that's what I've said about the, the, this influencer space if you notice like the people that are thought leaders and that are out there they're not like they're not super mainstream right but like my instagram feed is filled with people that are wanting to create goodness in the world and there's an infinite amount of space for that and that to me like that inspires me more than anything like that is what the world is looking for they're not looking for more competition and more we have that like we got to survive we got to make money we got to you know pay our bills and by all means i'm responsible i want to make a living all of that good stuff but there is so much capacity for goodness out there and then that goodness like we're i feel like there's a bigger space being created for that goodness to be something that's marketable and that's what the world's looking for like we're tired of just you know getting our chin over the bar it's not inspiring and even if, you know, you do your nine to five, like we all want to be inspired, right? So whatever we have in us to bring that inspiration to the world, like that's, to me, that's like our human job in whatever form it was given to you. And that's going to be different like for all of us. I'm reading a book. It's called uh, The Art of Communication. Oh, and yeah. uh, one of the mantras was when someone tells you, uh, oh, you're, uh -oh. you're smart or you're, you're, you're or you're good. Yeah. Um, the response and that mantra is, yes, part of me is, but there's also the other side. For sure. And it's like this level, at least to me, and this level of humbleness. To just you know, it's like it's it's yeah. It's like to to be able to when someone says, oh, you're bad, you take it the same way. 
Right. Yes, part of me is, but there's also a good side. Yeah. At any time, you're never seeing the whole picture. Well, we're human, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. None of us is perfect. I mean, and to be able to admit our weaknesses, that's like, to me, that's one of the most attractive things in a human being. Like, if you can let your guard down, and we all have them. We all have weaknesses. We all have things we want to work on, but that's how we get better. Yes, right? That requires the lowering of ego, and some people just sort of played it for that Yeah, transition. well, it's protective. Right. It's, like it's start protective. With, so start with, yeah. start with A, yeah. and move on to B. And you know what? Like, it's hard to, to and, 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 and when layers get built up over time, like it's, it, it's a really, it's a scary thing and it's a protective mechanism to survive. And you know, I don't discount that. Like it is, but the freedom that comes when you let it go, like you're going to be so scared to let it go, but you let it go. And then you're like, wow. Okay. Like whatever you needed to get through that, whatever helping hand you needed, whatever, you know, talk or, I mean, you see, like, I've, I've done the energy healing thing. I've done the therapy thing. I've done, you know, I have a tremendous support system, but that's because I open up, right? I, I feel like I have been real with the people in my life to the extent that I was able to. Now, yes, I'm much deeper and much more self-realized than I was five years ago, but I was, I've always been real to the extent that I could with the people in my life. And when I really hit some hard times, I was absolutely blown away by the level of support that I found. And that's encouraged me to get even more real because I didn't know that when I was completely at my lowest point, that's what was gonna that's what it was gonna feel like to be loved and to have people come around and like really support you. Like that's better than protecting yourself. <laughs> When you sit there and protect yourself, you don't feel that. Like, you don't get that connection with people. And there's nothing better than that human connection and feeling understood. But you can't be, you can't feel understood if you don't put it out there. Right? So, I lost the book. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I knocked it. Yeah. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Technical. <laughs> Gina, <laughs> um, okay. Um. <laughs> oh, we got a comment. Got a roll. Love your stuff. Keep doing you oh, later. Oh, nice. that's nice. If you're, um, how about this one? If you are feeling timid and scared, challenge your theory. Yes. Because <laughs> most of my life, I felt timid and scared, and um, I think I was born that I think I was born kind of shy and you know timid and then you kind of get on that path and then people continue to either see that in you and then comment on it so it gets becomes more ingrained right no one goes oh challenge that right they say oh she's timid oh you know protect that I don't necessarily believe that's the right thing to do or the best thing to do right I mean I, I I I shudder to think like what would happen if I just like think back. Like I would if I was born timid, I wouldn't be sitting here, right? There's something in all of us that brings us to our highest realization of what we're supposed to be, and there's things in us that challenge that, and those are the things that we're supposed to break through. So. Challenging my theory of being timid, of being shy, of being afraid to be seen. That's exactly what brought me to here, here today. And, like, I'm happy. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. So you do have to challenge your theory. Like, you know, even if you know who you are, you can keep getting better. That's the only way to keep getting better, really. So, I like that one. Where does courage come from for you? Oh, that's a good one. I was actually called somebody the other day and have, I come up with these questions, mostly when I'm listening to podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> because I was trying to figure out whether courage comes from um, knowing that you can handle whatever's coming, but you I mean we don't ever know what's coming, right? 
but that belief that no matter what's coming, I can handle it. Right. Okay. But to me, I think that's where my courage comes from. Because I now have that feeling that like that I know between my faith and my value system and my belief in myself, all of these things are going to, whatever comes at me, I'm going to be able to handle it. And that gives me courage. I think there's another, other, in other ways, like people who have maybe achieved things in life and they've kind of, they've hit those higher echelons, those upper levels of, because they put in work or, I mean, you can say people get lucky, people put in diligent work and they hit these points, but that can give you courage just by achieving, right? For me, that's, you know, I was telling you the other day, I think one of my insecurities, I said, I'm not an expert in anything, right? That one will always like bring me, you want to talk about insecurity? I'm like, what do I have to talk about? I, I majored in one thing. I'm doing something else. I'm raising four kids. They're probably, you know, they're amazing, but who's to say you're a good parent, right? Like whatever I'm doing, like there's huge variables and all that stuff. So what, like, I'm not an expert. Like I just think, like I just think and I do and I form thoughts and I write. What is that? You know, so that there's my self doubt coming back. Right. Well, I think that's completely valued of what you actually thought. What I see, yeah. you know, just okay. like one, you got four kids and look at you. <laughs> <laughs> like start with that, and then secondly, your, your kids are amazing. Like you know, like Abe sat through dinner the other night. <laughs> well, like, Lou, incredible kid. Having yeah. a video sponsored by like hundred and yeah. what hundred and thirteen thousand views right now. I haven't even looked at him. I was like, so proud of him, though, because he handled the camera like he didn't get that from me. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at that and went, oh, my gosh, that's how you do it. I love it. <laughs> I know. And then I have another actor. See, they do. They do stuff that you just they blow you away. I asked Kate when I was learning how to teach yoga. I was like, I am so afraid to get up and talk in front of, I don't care, 10 people, 20 people in the room. And I'm like, how do you get up on stage, memorize all those lines, and you're Gaston and Beauty and the Beast, and, you know, she's going to be Captain Hook and Peter Pan, and just stands up, and she, that kid's as quiet as me. She looks like me, she passes through a room, she doesn't say much, and you put her up on a stage, and, you know, they blow you away. They blow you away. So, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I think it's just born into them, but. Yeah, maybe I can take credit for that, I guess. Good parents can go yeah. well, well, I come from a good family. You yeah. know, my parents yeah. are amazing. Yeah, my um, parents are pretty great. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it doesn't come without its challenges, and I'm sure I gave my parents hell, but yeah. <laughs> but I'm also, I came up, wow. Well, you're doing fine, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you work hard, you're super I like, bright. I believe, well, for me, it's my work ethic is, is based upon one lesson. That lesson is um, uh, initiative. I remember the day I learned initiative. Like it was the, like that was the one that uh-huh. unlocked my potential. Uh huh. And I think for a lot of people, they're missing that. Yeah. It's, you know, and it's it's a lot of things that they're missing. So how did you learn? <laughs> well, I, I went to work with my dad, and okay. he was doing some. My dad's a hands-on type of person, so mm-hmm. he was we were fixing something at our home. Okay. And uh, he's like, I need you to. Give me the drill when you see me pick up a screw. I need you to do stuff before I ever tell you what to do. You should already know. I was like, Dad, I'm not ever going to read your mind. <laughs> like, I'm not a mind reader. Yeah. Um, How old were you, do you think? I was like, like eight. Oh, God. Yeah, I was young. I yeah. was very young. But I remember this awesome. like, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then I started, I became more aware that day of just everything. My mom's comments about the dishes. Uh-huh. My dad's comments about like just being like you know just yeah. You, you realize that everyone's always communicating what is wrong with the world. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and you try to fix it. And yeah. you know I try to be you know try to be that little light. <laughs> yeah, my friends say, and, and but it flourished. And yeah, it, because it just it goes beyond. <laughs> well, do you feel like? But you're like you're such a your own independent person. At oh, this I'm point, I'm from that independence. Yeah, yeah I had to symbolic. Because kill sometimes them. <laughs> it's hard to. Sometimes it's hard. Well, I think because when you learn to be that light for other people, 
if you go too far down that road, it can take away from you being your Maybe. own true self, Completely. which is something that I've learned. Right, but at that time, I needed that. For sure, so and that's know. why I think that age, I mean, that's right. that's amazing. If you're saying you're learning initiative at eight, like, your parents are on the right track. That's good. Stuff. <laughs> like, that's good. Yeah, that's was, really good. It was great. Um, see, but I've done that, like, with every job that I've had. I've yeah. wanted to be that guy that always does more. Because uh-huh. there's five, there's, what is it, 300 and, 300, 330 million people in the United States. Right. I was like, okay. any one of them can replace me. And that was my biggest fear growing up. Like, oh my God, going that into, is so awesome. Well, like, <laughs> like, like, I'm replaceable. Yeah, you are. Uh-huh. Like, don't think you're smarter than anyone. Like, uh-huh. you know, the people writing the manuals for everything you've ever learned, they're smarter than you. They're wiser than you. They have more experience than you. They have better gear. They have everything. They have the world of opportunity in front of them. Uh-huh. And you're just one individual. What are you going to do? You're going to try as hard as you can. Because now it's a competition not against them. It's a, against the, the... See, right? <laughs> you're the only competition you need, yeah. right? Well, I mean... <laughs> I'm good When your mindset... though, But when your mindset is... When you're that self-aware you know what's going on outside of you but like you're gonna drive your own competition right mm-hmm. and i'm the same way because i'm in the marketplace of ideas yeah. <laughs> yeah. i've always been in the marketplace of ideas yeah the best idea wins mm-hmm. but it's not even the best product that wins it's the one that communicates the best you're right absolutely because i've seen ideas that are good completely fail you see that in the marketplace of startups all day long. Mm-hmm. It's usually the third company that ends up being the successful one. Yeah. You know, there were other products that were like Google. Google just happened to be good enough that, and, and, and their expansion plan was much bigger than, than everyone else's. Same thing with Facebook. Like, think, MySpace was right. there before then. Right. Facebook just had a better strategy. They communicated it only to colleges, the people that were yep. looking for the right ideas and understanding the value and potential of the internet. Yeah. Genius. Yeah. Just genius. That's so good. <laughs> We should have a quote. Um, yeah. Great. Um, <laughs> learn to be compelling, not controlling. It's another short one. I have some longer ones in here, but like these quick ones, like they really hit me. Um, because that's kind of how I want to live. And I've learned that through parenting. Um, or like you see, you feel it when people understand you. And that. I like that because I feel like that means that I'm living a compelling life. And if there's anything I really want to do, like maybe I have a problem or I have a fear of being seen, but if I could be that compelling, if my story is compelling to somebody, if that's going to inspire someone who, you know, like some days, you know, you're just getting up trying to like make that day work. And I think when I have those days, I know that I'm not the only person that's just getting up trying to make that day work. And if if I know I, I don't feel alone in that, I, I just I have this instinct that I just I want to do it the best that I can. And that is compelling, right? And when you're compelling, you don't have to worry about going, you have to do it this way. Like kids, you you know, if you don't you know, in, in you know, sitting in the seat at eight thirty a.m. and this, 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 and you know, it has to be done. And there's this real sense of control over, like, if it doesn't go this way, then everything's gonna fall apart. I think you've all seen that person. Stand <laughs> to live like that. I don't want to answer. Like, I believe, I I understand in my core, like, what I'm doing in my day, and I want what that is to be compelling. But in the last, the last. And the last thing that I, I don't think controlling sticks. I think controlling, especially with kids, is they might do what you say in front of you. And then, and that's not to say I don't have high standards and my kids have rules and all those things, but just heavy handed control, that's, it's fear based. I want, I want to feel it. I want my kids to feel it. I don't want them to just be afraid. And say like, oh, if I don't do this, I'm in trouble. Or if I don't do this, I'm scared. That like, I don't even want them to say I'm scared of what's going to happen. I want them to understand why we do what we do. So that's where that quote came from. Um, or this one: there is no conflict between high standards and a humble soul. And that one 
because humility is super, super important to me. Um, I think there was a thought or, you know, there were some thoughts put in my head that, you know, I like things a certain way or I have a, I have a high standard of just, you know, how humans treat each other or, you know, how as adults we act or how we grow or, you know, I'm hard, I'm, I'm equally hard on myself. But I could, it could be said, like, I have a high standard. I do. Like, nothing wrong with that. Right? Well, you but it's not, <laughs> I, for a long time, it, it was in conflict. I felt like I was being less than humble and saying, this is what I expect. Right. When I know that what I expect is good, and it leads to goodness, and it leads to a better world, and it leads to stronger kids and better you know stronger humans so keep your standard and you can stay humble it's not because you think you're better it's because the product that we're trying to create like we have so much potential why tell ourselves short right so i agree completely one of the things at least for me when it comes to understanding that conflict it came with a realization uh where did that realization come from for you. Like the, the realization that it's okay to have high standards, but it's, you could also be humble about it. Like I think it's just understanding your your worth. Back to value. Back to <laughs> back to knowing your yeah. value. Everything for me, it's it, it it seems to go around in a circle of like because everything seems to be interdimensionally connected. <laughs> right. I mean, it, understanding that that my my opinion is valuable. Understanding that my thoughts are valuable because I do put the effort in to actually think them through. I'm not trying to control anybody. I'm trying to you know, make the world a better place. My intention is good. I, I'm always coming back to that. My intention is good. My intention is good. And it's been pointed out to me that when I make a statement that I, I don't say things that are all that controversial, but um, if I do even feel like I touch the edge of something that could be controversial, the, la the next thing I'll say is, but I don't mean to hurt anybody. So I have a huge fear of hurting other people with what I believe. And yet what I believe I know is good. And I'm I'm pushing forward with that. But you know, I I want other people to be able to live their lives. But I want to be able to live mine. So I think one of the things that well, at least in my understanding, what the postmodernists have done with, with not just the at least in my point of view colleges and liberal arts schools and, you know, yeah. it's ideology. Mm -hmm. So, where do you stand with your ideology? I think I just believe so much in the greatness of the human spirit that I I think that's why I moved away from politics so much. It's just that, you know, when I went to Washington and went to John McCain's memorial service, when we went back to his office and we were talking to some of the staffers that have worked there for the last, you know, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, where I, my question to them was, where, where, what are you doing today? And a lot of them, and granted, it could be a function of age and family and all that, but they've moved on. And what they're doing is they're making an impact in their day with, you know, when the, you know, being a fighter pilot and two days a week and, and, you know, volunteering on the, the bench on the on the side and like work people make a difference. Political parties don't make a difference. I'm sorry, I, I'm jaded on that. I grew up in a public policy oriented household, not a political household. And I cannot handle the vitriol and the Sounds name right. calling and the there's no recognition that there's humanness on either side. And granted, it's there are people that are not showing humanness, but there are good people still. And there are what we're not doing, we're not attracting people who would actually want to run for office. Like, why would you want to, why would good people want to go do that? I mean, my dad is like, honestly, the, one of the greatest Americans that ever lived. Very small ego. Like, goes about his day. And I honestly believe, like, you hit a point in American politics where ego becomes a big part of the game. And you slight somebody and, you know, it's it's over. And 
we lose people lose out when the, the when that's when that's the when it becomes about power and money and all of these things like and it's not open right i mean okay i'm a, so my story from this week my i had you know my sister asks like do you want some tickets to go see lindsey graham this week and i said oh yeah i might write about it. she's like oh i don't know if you could write about it why if i go somewhere i might write about it like the fact that you need all of these levels of clearance and stuff just to be an American and say what you want to say, and like that people are afraid of what you're going to say, like don't be afraid of what we're going to say. Be a good human. And if someone says something and you, they, you don't feel like it's right, you know that you were just out there doing what you do. I love, I mean, Lindsey Graham, probably out there doing what he, you know, he goes to Washington, comes out here, like they live in this, like, there's a life that's going on but that Capitol Hill life is very, very removed from, see, I wasn't going to do this. Shoot. I've been trying to stay out of the political realm, but I've been reading a lot of stuff today, and it's not working. Um, yeah, like I said, i got to write something before November 6th. So, um, yeah, I just, I believe in the human spirit. So. That's a good ending. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm going to give you one more. I'm going to give you, because there's, there's a couple, like, I've given all short ones. And, oh, uh, I don't know. These are all about being uncomfortable. May, we, may your courage be equal to your intuition. I guess here I'll close with this one. Surround yourself with people who believe in growth. Mindset is contagious. And mindset is contagious. So that's why I read what I read. That's why I write what I write. That's why I live how I live because my mindset's working for me. It's brought me through a ton of challenge, and I'm stronger than I ever knew. And then I attract people like Abe and other amazing people in my life that have that same growth mindset. And you're out there are so many people out there doing such good things that are not famous, and they're not they're just doing their they're doing their level best. They're they're doing what their passion is every day, and we don't always hear about them. So I'd love to hear some of those stories. I'd love to tell those stories. And I love the people who are out there doing it. So, yeah, I'm excited. My book's Open coming out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, show the book. Um, okay, where's the cover, Abe? Ah, <laughs> I don't know how to find it. <laughs> the cover is awesome. Right. The cover is the ocean on it. It's my favorite. I've been living in the water my whole life. Um, yeah. For the book? 365 Days of Optimism, Embracing Optimism One Day at a Time. Um, it's you. Can, it's available for pre-order at the optimistjournal dot com, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's gonna be available on sale yeah. with pre-order um, until the book launches. Once the book launches, it's gonna be you know we're gonna have coupon codes and everything, and cool. it'll be around. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, a hundred viewers. I'm gonna keep it shared, twenty four hours. Okay.